Tell your friends! Tell your friends about Hooks and Ladders, but also about songstudio.ca. You can get all kinds of information about songwriting, tips and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, like, follow and subscribe. That's what we need, that's what you need. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, our uh, our guest you're already familiar with. I think if you're not, uh, you haven't been paying attention. This is Andrea Ramelo. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Andrea has been with us at Song Studio uh, a whole bunch of times, and we work together on, in other circumstances. And she's a delight, uh, not only as a, a performer, but as a person and as a, as, a, as a positive energy to be around. He's lying to you all. <laughs> no, and if you haven't been <laughs> in a group yet, you really should. You owe it to yourself to be in Andrea's group because she can get to the, the heart of the matter really quickly and, and in a nurturing, wonderful way. So, but we need to know, and I will ask, some of the questions will be redundant, um, of course, because, you know, I, my brain is only so big. Um, <laughs> I do need to know, because I don't remember the answer. How did you come to music in the first place? So, um... When I was 23, I started quite late, so I grew up as a dancer, um, always involved with music and always singing and dancing. Um, but professionally speaking, my mother was diagnosed with her first of three cancers when I was 23. So I was just at the tail end of university. I was studying theater um, and dance and all of that stuff that sort of goes alongside with music, nice pairing anyways. Um, and I always sang, but I didn't know how to play an instrument. I never took piano or anything because I was really a competitive dancer. So I would travel and live in hotel rooms as a kid, as a dancer. So I started tour life pretty young in that sort of way on stage. Uh, and then when she was sick, um, it was it just floored me. Like I had never had an experience like that. And me and my mom are like this and we still are. And she's she fought every one of the three cancers, so she's still alive. <laughs> uh, we Sometimes we don't even know how she's still alive. Right. But, um, right. you know, she's taken out a bunch of parts, so... Um, but she's the most joyous woman. And in order for me to get through that time, I needed... I needed something to do. I needed to take my mind off of it. I needed sort of a form of therapy. And for some reason, I don't know why, but the, this, my dad had this old guitar in the basement, because my dad's pretty musical, too. Um, my brother's also... a uh, a musician, a recording artist. He has like nine records as well. Um, in a different vein of music, very experimental. But we grew up in a kind of musical family. Like we always sang and we would jam around my dad's various instruments for fun. But this particular time I was like, I, I just needed to get my head uh, you know, out of the out of the sadness of it all and, and sort of focus on something that was nurturing and, and not, you know, didn't make me want to cry. I, although it still made me want to cry, writing music, because, you know, music is life and all of that. So I picked up the guitar and I taught myself how to play. And this was like, internet wasn't like, you know, the way it is now. Like, I'm 43, so this was 20 years ago. Um, so I taught myself, you know, three chords in the truth kind of thing. I started with the three, five chords, and I was really bad. Um, and then I started writing songs, and one of the first ones was about my mom's um, breast cancer. And, and then, you know, a few years later, I, I think I, I was such a good girl growing up, followed all the rules, got my two university degrees, you know, I was an academic and all that. And then, um, and I had a, you know, a partner for 10 years, I was going to get married and all this stuff. And then my mom got sick, and then I went the other way. And I kind of like lived my wild days and my childhood and life on the road. And I bought a van and I lived in my van for three years touring across North America. Um, so I'd leave every April and I'd come back every September. I had a one man band with me and we lived inside on a queen size mattress with like a roof box and fishing gear. And we literally lived in the woods, like in the Yukon and Newfoundland and Haida Gwaii. And uh, I saw this country over and over again and I met the most amazing people. And that's how I learned how to play my instrument and sing. Because, you know, my voice was novice, like it was raw. I was a really raw performer when I was young. And I would write in the country folk kind of realm because that was easy for me because, you know, with the G, C, D, yeah. E minor, A minor, yeah. I mean, I still only know to play those chords, but it, there's a nuance about it now, I yeah. think, in my rhythm playing. But, uh, you know, that's what I did. So my first two records were very much of that vein, which I never bring out in public spheres anymore. But uh, it's a nice souvenir. If you ever want to make fun of me, I'll give you 
<laughs> this is where I came from. And then it just, it, you know, my, my career just evolved and from there yeah yeah, yeah. there's so many questions it brings up um but i and i but i want to get to the other ones too so if i commit to one i feel like uh we may lose the uh, the opportunity for the other ones but um dance coming from a dance background has it influenced your writing or your performing oh yeah like i feel like i i know music because of dance i live music in my body so when i perform on stage it was very for me like a lot of people i still get a little bit nervous but for me, um, my body is my entire vessel of communication, and that come and you know my voice is included in that, right? Um, plus, I grew up like as a dancer, you know, I, I did ballet, so I was around classical music. I did hip hop, um, so I was around street music. I did tap dancing, so I was around a lot of jazz music, right? Growing up, like old jazz tunes, uh, gospel. So, like, I think that that was my. Um, secret music education that I didn't really realize until I started playing bigger shows. And I was like, I have these, you know, especially when you play like festival workshops and everyone of different genres are jam jamming together. And it's like, I have these in my, th this sound in my bones and I have this in my musical repertoire, even though, you know, I'm not trained at all. Like I'm not a, I'm not a trained singer. I don't know how to read music. I wish I could play that piano. Maybe when I turn 50, I'll start taking piano lessons. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, there's. I heard, overheard somebody talking about the John Lennon piano style the other day, which is basically, you know, like that. And and so it, it could be a similar experience for you as you as picking up the guitar in the first place, because honestly, it's just shapes at, at the beginning, you know. And then there's more, obviously. Um, the uh, yeah. So so yeah. The, I was going to say at the festival stages, those genres of music that you mentioned, you're going to run into those, as you say, in a workshop, just sitting on a stage with a, a bunch of people, and and it'll give you a, a familiarity with that, with those genres, which you wouldn't have otherwise had, perhaps. So that's a beautiful thing. So, okay, um, having your, your wild rebellion years, let's say, a little older um, is an interesting experience, particularly if you have two degrees, you have, a, uh, you have formal training and so forth, and then you, you know, because you're faced with some uh, potential tragedy uh, and challenging circumstances, you decide to throw, like to go against that, this is an interesting thing, I would think, for our, our people here, because I would think that they maybe haven't done that yet or are maybe doing it now by being at Song Studio. That's amazing. And yeah. Really, it's never too late, right? Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's a, a demonstration, I think, of taking a circumstance, your mother being sick, and turning it into something that's literally life-changing in a, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Well, what? I mean, music is, for me, started off as a healing process, and continues that way so I mean you know my earlier records I was very you know I went inward and it was all about me and my love lives and the failed rela many relationships that I've had and you know loss and all of that and then as I grew and grew yes those personal stories are still in there because I find them so crucial because I feel like you know, just because you might not have had the exact same experience, you can relate to loss, you can relate to love, because those are the two things as humans that we have in common. We share that, right, as human beings. Um, and when we're able to sing about them and, and play music about them, we invite our audience in to share that experience and to maybe reminisce or reflect on, you know, the loss, the pain, the, the joy that they felt. Um, and then it becomes an exchange. So that's what I love about sharing art and music is that that communication just because the audience isn't saying anything back necessarily all the time there's that energy there that circle and and that's why i keep doing it because i just i love humans i love connecting with humans um i love our differences and similarities but i do find that music really connects us and it transcends us uh, through certain experiences that you know maybe just talking through it wouldn't do so it really has a power, and so I continue to use it. Like my not my last record because I just released an Italian project with this band from Italy, but the record before that, which was my seventh record, was called Quarantine Dream, and obviously, like it's <laughs> so dated. The title, you know, I wrote it, you know, locked in my room, living through like a very tragic situation with some downstairs neighbors who were. Um, you know, homeless youth who were thrown into a home and trying to like survive on their own and they were overdosing every week and the cops, like it was just a lot of violence. And so I, I lived this up this floor above them in this old crickety house feeling like they're, they're stuff, right? And like poor, like poor them, these poor kids. And that's why, you know, Leo came into my life and a new record because that new record 
I needed to write that record yeah. to get me through that period. Leo is a, a kitten, <laughs> a cat. Leo is my, my first son. Yes. Who yeah. almost died last yeah. year. But. Very uh, dramatic uh, <laughs> uh, story of Leo on Facebook. <laughs> uh, but honestly, it was. It was very moving. And, um, and, uh, and a lot of people shared in uh, following Leo's um, uh, decline and then, and then his uh, recovery. Hopeful recovery. Well, yeah. hopeful. We're yes, still, exactly. Fuck, We're yeah. still fingers crossed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, again, so many questions. Um, I, I feel like you've had three careers, essentially. You had your initial solo time, and then you had your Scarlet Jane time, which was a, a duo. Um, and then now you've got, you're, you're in the thick of your new, maybe four careers because of the Italian venture. Yeah, 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 which is kind of amazing because a lot of people don't have one. And, uh, you know, so it says it speaks to your determination, I think, and your desire to, you know, to put yourself out there and to pursue this, mm -hmm. which I think is important. I think it's crucial, actually. Thanks, Blair. Well, I don't want to get bored with what I'm, you know, singing about, too. Right. And yeah. I think, it, I mean, every every day we change. Right. So like the initial two records were getting my feet wet, baby steps, really like, like figuring out, okay, what is this music thing and figuring out how to write a song. Yeah. And then the next stage of the career, I was in a, a harmony duo. It was a folk harmony duo called Scarlet Jane. We put out two records under Warner music and it was very much about, okay, how do I collaborate with another person and songwrite together, which is a thing in and of itself. Like, you know, we got really good at that and we got really great at singing harmonies together. And it's a certain, it's a certain skill that, you know, not everyone finds it easy to, to co-write. Right. And I like that I had that experience because now I love co-writing with various artists. And then after that, I needed to find my own voice again. And so I worked with Michael Timmons from the Cowboy Junkies. Um, and I think he really got my vibe and my sound, which is kind of, kind of similar to what they've done always, which is like lo-fi, mm -hmm. moody, um, you know, rootsy. rootsy, revealing. And that's when this guy came into my life. So I put my Gibson away uh, three or four records ago, and I, I, I play it at home. But on stage, I haven't touched it since Scarlet Jane. This has become my writing companion. This is a Dan Electro baritone guitar. So it's, um, you know, somewhere in between a, an electric bass and an electric guitar. Uh, because I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm a hack player. Like, I'm not a skilled guitarist. But I play with my thumb. So because of that, I get to hit, like, a lot of the bass notes. And then I have my rhythm. And I love where it resonates because it's much lower. It has five extra frets. So you can really go down. But I use my, I use the shit out of my capo. Am I allowed to swear on this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the capo, you know... It is, it is a wonderful creation. I love that. You know, and not only that, it's like when I'm into my singing and my song and delivering and all that, and I'm connected to my audience and to, to the piece, I don't want to be looking. Like, I'm not, I don't want to take the time to have to do all this stuff up here. Like, I, I want to pre present the song. I want to communicate. So that's my, at, for me as an artist, that's my number one goal. Um, so whatever makes that easiest, uh, that's sort of the route that I take. And so... And so, yeah, and then I did the three records, solo records. Uh, actually, in between the two um, was a Leonard Cohen uh, homage record called Homage. And uh, I'd lived at Leonard's house for a couple of weeks because I performed with the Montreal Symphony and his son, Adam, who's an, also a performer. And uh, we were hired as, like, the Web Sisters, so we sang the background harmonies for him. And we got to sing some of Leonard's songs, too. And Leonard was alive still at this time. And then uh, I'd stayed at the house a bunch, and then Leonard died. Um, I always, I always joke in my shows that, you know, I never met the man or saw him live in a concert, but I took a bath in his bathtub and he wasn't in the bathtub with me at the time. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, this was a challenge. I, um, Gavin Gardner, I was telling you this yesterday, Ingrid, cause Gavin produced Ingrid's record from the wooden sky, a f fantastic, uh, Toronto band. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were both doing this big last waltz reunion show at uh, Corona Theatre, this big theatre in Montreal, and Leonard had died a week before, so I passed by the house to give my condolences, and there was, there was like a shrine of all the fans leaving guitars and letters and teddy bears and pictures and candles, and they were afraid it was going to burn down, so they put up plexiglass. Um, and that night, we were doing all the band, you know, like Dylan's songs and Emmy Lou Harris and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the organizer's like, somebody needs to, we need to pay homage to, to Leonard. He just passed in. He's Montreal's son. So Gavin and I went into the shower stall in the green room bathroom and we worked out, hey, that's no way to say goodbye. 
and you could literally hear in like a crowd of 2,000 drunk people, really drunk partying people rock and roll, you could hear a pin drop and people were sobbing and they did a beautiful montage of Leonard in the, in the back. And that was the first time I had sung that song live and then I closed every single one of my concerts following that show with that song. And that's why, what, what kind of led me to do the record. I wanted to challenge myself and get into, you know, the words of Leonard. <laughs> 